This girl was abducted by a man posing as FBI who subjected her to a terrible two-year ordeal. In a five and dime store in Camden, New Jersey, a young girl steals a notebook to impress her friends. But as she tries to flee, she's stopped by a man claiming to be from the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Terrified of being punished, she blindly follows his orders, stepping into a horrific ordeal that will last for the next two years. Florence Sally Horner was born in 1937 and lived with her family in Camden, a city located on the banks of the Delaware River in southern New Jersey. Sadly, Sally's father committed suicide when she was just a young girl, leaving her seamstress mother, Ella, to manage the household alone. By June 13, 1948, Sally's older sister, Susan, was married and expecting her first child. Meanwhile, 11-year-old Sally was about to finish the fifth grade at Camden's Northeast School, and she was keen to prove just how grown up she was by joining a clique of female classmates. As an initiation into their gang, Sally's classmates told her to steal a notebook from a local Woolworth store. But while at first it seemed as though she succeeded, Sally was soon apprehended. To her horror, an older man wearing a fedora grabbed her by the arm before she could even make it out the door. Announcing himself as an FBI agent, the man told Sally that she'd be placed under arrest for her crime. Furthermore, he told her that the courts would likely send her to reform school. But as Sally started to cry, the man softened and offered her what must have seemed like a tempting deal. Claiming to be different from the other agents, the man told Sally he'd let her off this time. In fact, if she promised to check in with him occasionally, he'd allow her to return home without punishment. But even though Sally was grateful to escape the horrors of reform school, she soon fell victim to a far worse fate. On June 14th, Sally was leaving school when the man from the store approached her with a strange story. Apparently, the government had instructed him to take her to Atlantic City, New Jersey, some 50 miles away. And in order to comply, Sally would have to lie to her mother, telling her that the man was the father of two of her friends. Shockingly, the ruse worked, and Ella allowed Sally to leave with the man. The stranger, however, had nothing to do with the FBI. In reality, he was Frank LaSalle, a mechanic in his 50s who had already been in trouble with the law on a number of occasions. In fact, he'd only recently been released from prison following multiple convictions for rape. Using the alias Frank Warner, LaSalle spirited Sally away to Atlantic City, where they took up residence in a local rooming house. In order to avoid suspicion, the pair kept up a pretense of being father and daughter. Meanwhile, Sally, still terrified that she'd get in trouble, continued to assure her mother that nothing was wrong. After six weeks of excuses, though, Ella finally realized that LaSalle would not be bringing her daughter home. On July 31st, Ella contacted the police, who managed to track LaSalle to the rooming house in Atlantic City. By the time that the authorities got there, however, Sally's abductor had taken the girl and disappeared. The pair then made their way to Baltimore, Maryland, where LaSalle continued to pose as Sally's father. By then it was September 1948, and Sally briefly began attending a local school. The pair did not stay in one place for long, though, and by April 1949, they were living in a trailer park in Dallas, Texas. There, Sally once more enrolled in classes, where she became known as a good student. And to the pair's neighbors, LaSalle was simply a loving single father to the young girl. However, there was one woman who grew suspicious of LaSalle's cover story. Ruth Janish, who lived in the same trailer park, suspected that there was more to his and Sally's relationship than meet the eye. And when she and her husband left Dallas for San Jose, California, they persuaded LaSalle to follow them in the hope that they could get to the bottom of the situation. Her plan worked, and LaSalle and Sally arrived in San Jose on March 18, 1950. Three days later, Ruth invited Sally to her trailer. Away from her captor, the girl, now almost 13, began to open up about her ordeal. Apparently, Sally had already confided to a school friend back in Dallas who had told her the situation was not right. Emboldened by her friend's advice, Sally told Ruth that she wanted to return to her mother, and keen to help, the older woman gave her access to a telephone which the teen used to call Ella. However, the line had been disconnected. Thankfully, though, Sally was able to contact her sister Susan in Florence, New Jersey, where she was living with her husband and baby daughter. When Susan's husband, Al, answered the phone, Sally got straight to the point. Send the FBI after me, please, she was reported to have said. Shocked, Al notified the authorities who rushed to the trailer park to rescue Sally. 
but when LaSalle was apprehended later that day, he continued to insist that he was the girl's father and that Ella had known where they had been at all times. Within 24 hours, though, LaSalle had been charged under the Mann Act, a law that deems it a felony to take a female to another state for immoral purpose. In court, Sally was forced to deny any relationship with LaSalle. My real daddy died when I was six, and I remember what he looked like, she was reported to have said. I never saw this man before that day in the dime store. Subsequently, LaSalle was sentenced to between 30 and 35 years behind bars. And while Sally was given a chance to rebuild her life, her story went on to inspire one of the most controversial novels of all time. Apparently, while writing his infamous work, Lolita, the Russian author, Vladimir Nabokov, stumbled upon a newspaper article about Sally's ordeal. Interestingly, there are many parallels between Sally's experience and that of Nabokov's title character, Dolores Hayes. For example, both girls engaged in a long road trip with their much older captors, often staying in mobile home parks along the way. Additionally, the novel's protagonist, Humbert Humbert, often tells people that Dolores is his daughter. Nabokov's novel went on to become one of the most popular books in the English language, and Sally's story didn't just indirectly inspire the work either. Yes, she's in fact mentioned by name in a chapter where Humbert ponders what effects his actions might have had on the object of his affections. Had I done to Dolly perhaps what Frank LaSalle, a 50-year-old mechanic, had done to 11-year-old Sally Horner in 1948, Nabokov wrote? And in another heartbreaking parallel, Sally and Lolita were to meet similar tragic fates. Indeed, in Nabokov's novel, Dolores dies in childbirth at age 17. Sally, meanwhile, lost her life in a car accident just two years after escaping her ordeal. But as the inspiration for Lolita, Sally has achieved a strange kind of immortality that will last for many generations to come. Check out these other videos from Let Me Know. If you haven't made the move to subscribe to our channel, all you need to do is click on that red subscribe button. Thank you for watching.